Football legend Graham Polly Farmer recently passed away, leaving an incredible legacy. His AFL career broke barriers for aspiring Aboriginal football players. He used this influence to start a foundation that empowered Aboriginal students to further their education and seek a wide range of career options. Goes towards centre half forward, Farmer's in that lot and Farmer's pulled it in as he playing a, an inspired last quarter. There's Cable still in the hands of the trainers. I, I think well, he was fairly shy, you know. To it up again. Paul, he, he, and he didn't and like to be beaten at anything, especially sport, you know. And some of the, the other, the opposition boys would say, we can't play footy against you blokes because you haven't got any footy boots. But, but that was all right because they couldn't catch any of our kids Bradley anyway. Smith, Bill Dempsey, Farmer and, and Farmer, beautiful leap at the right second there to bring that one down. My name is Kim Farmer. I'm um, the daughter of Graham Polly Farmer. Um, and I, it's my pleasure to be sitting here today with Ted Kilmurray, also known as Square Kilmurray. Um, both Pole and um, Square grew up in Sister Kate's where we're situated today. And uh, really, this man is um, my dad's brother. Sister Kate's was, um, like many institutions um, at the time, Dad, Dad died when he was 84 and as he came here when he was 18 months old, um, we're talking about the 1930s and um, it was an orphanage um, run by Sister Kate's and um, this particular orphanage was for um, Aboriginal children and um, consistent with the policies of the day it was for fair-skinned Aboriginal children. He was a bigger chap than I was, and he, and he went to where the bigger kids were. Do you, do you remember if um, Paul enjoyed being at Sister Kate's? I think he did, because it was treated you know, as, as, a big, as a big family. Before we went to school, we'd all go into the, to the church and we'd sing a, a hymn with Sister Kate's. Beautiful. Beautiful. I used to love singing that. She, she had some good favourites. There is a green hill far away. Suffer little children to come unto me. And Nanny Holt used to play the organ. But she, to us, she was granny. But I suppose when she was Sister Kate's, when it was uh, got people talking about places. West Perth and East Perth are playing for the Graham Polly Farmer Shield. It's a fitting tribute to one of the most decorated players in Australian football history. At the Royals, Polly played in three premiership teams, won a Tassie medal, three Sandover medals and was seven times club fairest and best. Next came a highly successful six years at Geelong that included a premiership, runner-up in a Brownlow medal and two club best and fairest awards. The champion ruckman from WA had become a household name. He was a natural. I think most of them were, you know. Paul was getting so good at his handball. I was a, a ruck rover to him. But sometimes I wouldn't be where he told me to get. And when we come home that night, he'd really let me know about it, you know. We had, used to have a lot of lessons on handball. Uh, we used to sit on our beds in the flat and handball across the room. And the, and the flat wall used to get the marks of the football on it. So they didn't need uh, painting because there was a... Uh, a design on the walls where the football used to hit it, especially if the football was wet. Some of the stories that I think are uh, widely known about Dad during that time was, you know, being at um, green bushes and um, finding one shoe 
and wearing it for a year and he claims that his leg was shorter because of that. Um, I don't think any doctors agree with that, but that was his story. Um, he also, I don't know if it was during that time, but he developed the name um, Polly from supposedly talking a lot, but no one can actually support that no. that's actually true. No. And it comes as a bit of a surprise to me because he is a quiet, he has been a really quiet man um, uh, of few words. Um, he knew how to use his words well, whether it be on the football field, whether it being a coach and, 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 doing, and stirring people up. But uh, when it came to day-to-day -day life, he was a, a quiet man of very simple interests. Um, you know, at home, uh, he wasn't, he didn't, get the enjoyments of, of you know I'd always be going can we go out for dinner it's like why would you want to go out for dinner you know got, <laughs> there's nothing you can get there that you can't get here he, did, he wasn't interested really in going on holidays and traveling he did do a little bit but um, mostly he enjoyed being at home with his family when he uh, was thinking what he would do at the end of his football career he was um, he had put invested so much time in football and it had taken up all his time it took a while to kind of come up for air and then he realized that he was in a position to be able to kind of create um, opportunities for Aboriginal children in particular and um, he uh, I think people some people do know that he a book was um, written about dad and by Stephen Hawke um, and his condition was that um, any uh, monies that were made from that would go to the creation of a foundation. Originally there was an idea it might incorporate um, sport and obviously football, um, but it wanted to have it open for um, boys and girls and, um, and the focus came down to education. Um, that was in the 90s. Um, it's been now running um, for over 20 years. Um, it's now been revealed that Aboriginal students are staying on at school longer um, successfully and most importantly there are pathways to um, opportunities whether it be tertiary or um, vocational or employment or training and um, after over 25 years you know I'm, I'm very proud of where the foundation is today and, and certainly as dad is the founder, um, the namesake and the original patron. Then in 1976, he went full circle, going back to his birth as a non-playing coach. To this day, Graham Farmer remains one of the best four players I've ever seen.